to be or to not to be? That is the question. Um, I'm pretty sure there are a lot more questions than just simply to be or to not to be. Well then, to be or to not to be happens to be one of those questions. Joe's reviews! Sometimes I review shit and sometimes I don't. Good day. After a long hiatus, I decided to start reviewing games again. And Amnesia, The Dark Descent, is the game I chose for this review. The reasons why I had this hiatus will be kept a secret since, well, it's now your damn business. But it mainly involves laziness and Team Fortress 2. Amnesia is a first-person survival horror adventure game developed by Frictional Games and available on Steam. Frictional Games is an independent studio located in Sweden known for their work on the Penumbra series. And well, Sweden is also known for having really awesome metal bands and adorable blonde women. And well, I guess they're also known for Vikings and having export-oriented and mixed economies, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to review Amnesia, so let's do that! Anyways, like I said on my Killing Floor review, there are three types of horror games. Games that make the player feel disturbed through the game's environment and atmosphere. You know, the ones that are actually scary, like, you know, Silent Hill 2 and Fatal Frame. Really, really, really bloody action shooters. You know, the ones that everyone says are scary, but in reality, they're about as scary as the picture that's adorable little bunny. AKA games like Dead Space. But some of them have to be a lot of fun, like Resi 4 and Killing Floor. Then we have the scariest of them all, the 3D Sonic games. Games that are so atrociously bad that the mere thought of having to play them will horrify you. Because we all know Sonic gets along with the third dimension as well as Taco Bell gets along with your colon. I was going to Indonesia expecting it to be nothing but a bunch of jump scares. I was wrong! Take the man, cut the lines, cut the flesh, watch the blood spill, let it come! Please, I didn't do anything. No, no, no. Paint the man, cut the lines. Paint the man, cut the lines. Please, the man cries. Amnesia actually happens to be designed around the concept of being an actual horror game. You know, the ones that scare people, not Dead Space. Anyways. Amnesia happens to be one of the most well-designed horror games I've ever played. And before you ask, no, it is not better than Silent Hill 2, shut up! Like I said before, I was pleasantly surprised how good this game was. Amnesia's gameplay involves having the player exploring the stereotypical English castle, solving puzzles with this highly impressive physics engine called the HPL engine. Gee, I wonder what HPL stands for. Hmm... Oh, and the game is full of disgusting, repulsive creatures that will murder you horribly if you don't do anything besides hide in a corner and suck your thumb and call for your parents until they go away. This game takes place in 18th century England and puts you in the shoes of some British guy named Daniel. And our buddy Dan has... Amnesia! You know, I had amnesia one time, but I forgot what it was like, so go back on topic. This game starts out with your character Daniel stumbling around like a drunken idiot trying to remember what his name is, because he apparently drank an amnesia potion called Excessive Amounts of Alcohol. Afterwards, he sobers up and discovers a room full of chairs, and he starts to throw them around all over the place. Well, that's what happens when I play this game. Well, because... <laughs> chairs. Yeah! <laughs> chairs. <laughs> you chair! <laughs> hate chairs! <laughs> Then our buddy Dan Daniel explores the castle for a bit and finds a lantern, and a bunch of notes left in conveniently easy to find places by the game designers. These notes contain the backstory of the characters, the plot of the game, and pretty much anything plot related. After Danny reads enough notes, he learns that the owner of the castle is some old dude named Alexander, and Alexander has this magical orb that gives him supernatural powers. But, in order to get those powers, Alexander needs to get this substance created from human blood in times of stress called Vitae, or Vitae, or Vita, or Viagra. In order to get the Vitae, Alexander needs to kidnap a bunch of innocent people and gruesomely torture them with nightmarish torture devices. Daniel quickly realizes that Alexander is an evil, sadistic bastard, 
and he wants to murder him. So our buddy Dan finds a more conveniently placed notes left by the game's designers and starts the quest to murder Alexander because Alexander is a douche and nobody likes a douche. Plus his penis is tiny. There's more to the story than that, but I purposely left some out because, well, I'm lazy and people will be bitching and complaining about spoilers. Now that we got the story out of the way, let's talk about the game itself. The core game mechanics, other than involving the players shitting their pants, has the players solving physics puzzles with the Howard Phillips Lovecraft engine. See? That's what HPL stood for! Haha! -ha! The player will be moving from one area to the next, lighting torches and candles along the way throughout the course of the game. Oh, and running away from monsters, because those things will murder your face off if you go anywhere near them. The game implements a Lovecraft-inspired sanity meter. The lower your sanity meter, the more wonky and blurry the camera gets, because apparently the first thing that happens when a person goes insane is that they lose their contact lenses. Yeah, also straight out of Eternal Darkness, the lower your sanity, the more f***ed up the game gets. Oh look, it's Alexander, the guy I'm supposed to murder. Well, I'm gonna go along my merry way, la di da well, apparently I'm insane now, so let's take a look at that Alexander picture again. <laughs> yes, behold my amazing Shakespearean quality acting. The way this game depletes your sanity meter is by witnessing nightmarish events, staying in the shadows, because Daniel, despite being a fully grown adult, is afraid of the dark. Pfft, what a pansy ass. Oh, and your sanity will also deplete by staring at the monsters in the game. Pfft, what a pansy ass. The only way you can get your sanity back is by completing puzzles and progressing on with the game. The game puts you on a strict limit on resources such as lantern oil, matches, and health potions. So you have to use all your resources carefully because you'll obviously run out of them if you don't. There happens to be no combat in the game. When you see a monster, either you hide from him until he goes away, or you try sneaking past him. One of the few things this game has going for it is its pacing. The game will go through periods where the game will horrify you with a bunch of freaky stuff happening. Then there'll be periods where it's calm and peaceful, and parts where you must solve puzzles quickly in order to not be murdered. This game, like any great horror game, has a great atmosphere, and the lighting in this game is freaking awesome! This game has fantastic music. It's nowhere near the awesomeness of Silent Hill, but yes, the music in this game is indeed awesome. This game has a lot of things going for it, but it's not a perfect game. This game does have a few flaws. The level design isn't really all that great, you'll get lost from time to time, and you'll eventually need to look up a walkthrough in order to get past certain parts of the game. Some of the puzzles in this game are very straightforward, but some of them just make no damn sense. Late in the game, you'll meet a guy named Agrippa, who wants you to make a potion for him. Sounds simple enough, right? But the game doesn't give you enough clues to figure out how to make the potion, so you become frustrated and look up a walkthrough. Afterwards, the game will have you decapitate him and throw his head into a portal, which makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And that's to get the good ending. There isn't that much variety in enemies in this game, in fact, there are only two of them, but that was probably due to this game's budget since it's an indie title. At first, I thought they were horrifying, but after I got a good look at them, they look really stupid. Just look at this thing! This enemy is called the Grunt, and it's freaking hilarious to me. This is seriously the thing that tries to kill you in this game. Just look at it! This thing is hilarious! Just look at its face! It's all like, Die! Me scary! Me attack! Ah! Oh no! You closed the door! I want weakness! Ah! It's hard to believe that, you know, this thing will try to brutally murder you. But trust me, it will. We also have another enemy in the game called the Brute, who is much, much more threatening than the Grunt. It makes you feel like you're in danger when he's around, but he still looks very stupid. Just look at his face! His face looks like a vagina with teeth attached to it. His face looks like an evil vagina! <laughs> I mean, come on, who, who's, who, who can look at this with a straight face and not think it's an evil vagina? I can't get over the fact that his face is an evil vagina! <laughs> Yeah, there are multiple endings in this game, and they all suck. Just watch. I mean, just just watch this ending. Just watch it.
There he is. Do you see him, Vaya? He deserves so much more. Please, help him. I know you can. Don't worry, Daniel. It will be all right. Yeah, and that was supposed to be the good ending. That ending was crap! What happened? What happened to Daniel? What happened to Alexander? What happened? This ending doesn't tell you anything! The rest of the endings aren't any better. I'm not asking for, you know, Metal Gear Solid 3 ending quality, but you can do better than that. I mean, come on! Other than that, Amnesia is a fantastic game, and anyone who has any interest in horror should buy this. If they haven't bought it already. And like a true soul since Amnesia is a very, very popular game. And I don't really know how to end a video, so bye.